criminals getting more brazen in Chicago after a police officer is gunned down during a routine traffic stop. 29-year-old officer Ella French was killed in the line of duty while her partner remains in critical condition after being shot three times. Sadly, the carnage doesn't end there. This past weekend alone, 73 people were shot and 10 were killed in the Windy City. Despite this out-of-control violence, Democrat Cori Bush is doubling down on her call to defund police. You said you have your own security, but almost in the same breath advocating for defunding the police. The reason why we have this problem is because those that were empowered and could have fixed this problem before now didn't and cost it cost lives. We adding more money to the police, but but we're still dying. So Congress something has to change. So, you know, Katie, we just got done talking about essentially two classes of people in this country, elites. Cori Bush's position, it seems to be, when it comes to the police and personal protection, is that she is more important than everyone else. Her position doesn't seem to be just let them eat cake, it's let them eat lead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, Officer Ella French wanted to be make a difference in her community. She signed up for this dangerous job in one of the most dangerous cities in the entire world. And she woke up that day to go do her job and to try and help, and she got a call that ended her life. And there are dozens of other officers around the country who have suffered the same fate. And you have the mayor making statements, and you have people like Cori Bush who have implemented this leftist ideology in cities across the country at the mayor, the mayor level, at the prosecu prosecution level, and criminals are in charge. And it doesn't seem like they're doing anything to make sure uh, that this doesn't keep happening and you know Cori Bush keeps arguing she wants more social workers to be involved well call a social worker to deal with a dangerous situation where someone will respond to a traffic stop uh, with lethal force yeah. and there are police officers every day who get up uh, to serve their communities to make a difference they don't go home they have families too and if you want to really understand how this all went down listen to the police scanner because that will give you a whole different perspective on this entire debate Dana. Well, she, um, that was, I was just going to mention that, to Cori Bush's point, if you follow her logic, to the extent there is any, routine traffic stops should end. Mm -hmm. And why do you have routine traffic stops? Well, because there was a call, and it says this could be a problem. Turns out, actually, the feds just um, arrested, right before we came on air, a, a straw gun purchaser. So somebody bought the gun for the guy. Now, that guy's in trouble as well. Um, and her brother, uh, the officer's brother, said... He is an Iraq war veteran, so this, this family was all about public service. And he's devastated. He said, like, the, God took the wrong kid, is what he said here. And I thought that the police superintendent there said, no one's going to march or protest yes. for her. And, and that's a shame. I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not suggesting people <laughs> protest and march in the street or riot. I'm not suggesting that. But he makes a really good point on where we put our values. You know, uh, Jessica, Mayor Lori Lightfoot wants to move this away from being a political issue, at least the defund the police political issue. She wants to actually focus it on a different political issue. Let's watch what she had to say, and I'll get your response. The police are not our enemies. They are human, just as we are. Flawed, just as we are. We have a common enemy. It's the guns and the gangs. See, Jessica, this is a story about guns. It is a political issue, but not defund the police, gun control. I, it's all the things. And I wish that people, it takes too long, unfortunately. I mean, we have an hour show, which is a huge privilege to be able to revisit topics and to get everyone's opinion on that. And unfortunately, that's just not how the news works. And there are so many tragic angles to this. And yes, guns are part of the problem. And someone who sold a gun to someone who had a felony, uh, charge beforehand and that person's going to be in trouble as well. It's a problem that majority of the guns that get used in some of these uh, in these cities come from conservative states with looser laws and then they get bust across the border and then they get used in Chicago. Um, but I do want to, I don't want to be like, oh, the silver lining in this because it's a tragedy to, to lose a life. I'm happy to hear more nuance to these discussions from people in positions of power who are moving away from just straight up like, this is about cops that gun down unarmed people, that we need to celebrate those in law enforcement who do risk their lives every day. And we also need to talk about the victims, the unarmed victims, but the police officers in the way that they should be. And that's something that Eric Adams, who will go on to be the mayor of New York City, has done really well, where he names the officers who have been shot and gunned down themselves and victims as well.
You know, Greg, not every story is a media criticism story, but to her point, to Jessica's point, in 2019, there were 14 unarmed black men killed by police. In that same year, 51 officers killed mm -hmm. in the right. line of duty. I don't think Americans understand that context. In fact, I know they don't. If yeah. you ask most people how many unarmed black men are killed every year, they get it wildly wrong, regardless of political affiliation. Yeah, the... Uh... Every time there were riots or demonstrations and arson, what predated it? It was a video of a tragic, ugly uh, uh, event involving either the death of an unarmed uh, suspect. Um, you could kept, like the media, if they wanted to, they could spend two hours every day and look at each case that happens through the year because there's not a lot. There's like if you add the if you add black and white and and I guess other other non-white, it's probably about two dozen, thirty maybe. I, I, in in that was 2019 from Washington from the Washington Post data. So I would suggest that, like, yeah, people should get in other people's faces. It's time. It's like if you, if the media, if we had video of the death of this police officer and we played it as much yeah. as the George Floyd video, what would happen? We will never know because that will never happen. We will never treat the death of a police officer as importantly as we would in any other case. I understand it because you could say that well, one is an authority and one isn't and one is armed and one is, I get it. But if you look at every single one of these cases, they are so nuanced, yep. right? Absolutely. And it's like, it, and you start saying, okay, now I see, this is like a really, really hard job. It's a really hard job. We demonized an entire force which then led to this, obviously the defunding, but also the Ferguson effect and the, and the dramatic rise in crime. Meanwhile, and I say this all the time, Lori Lightfoot is depending on what, what, is, what she's calling the national problem of gun violence. That's to paper over the fact that the national problem is crime, right? Whenever they talk about crime, they go, that's a local problem, but the guns are a national problem. No, 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 they're both the same, okay? So they're both a national problem. All right.